Can you imagine a game in which you sacrifice all of your pieces? Toss in the promotion of two pawns as well and you have a game to last. Yes sir, say Ravan. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video we are going to analyze one of the best games ever played. This game will just leave you speechless, believe me, I am honestly very surprised how could I not publish this game up to this day. On the white side is Uzbek chess grandmaster Grigori Serber and his opponent is Greek chess grandmaster Ioannis Nikolaidis. This game is from 1993 St. Petersburg Open. Serper opened up with c4 to which Nikolaidis answered with g6. e4 bishop g7, d4 d6, knight c3, knight f6. The good old king's Indian defense is on the board and knight e2. As you know usually white is putting his knight on f3 but in this game looks like that Serper had something special in his mind, I'm sure this was a preparation by him and we have a somewhat offbeat line starting with knight e2 then knight g3. So white is leaving the f3 square free for his pawn, bishop e3 h5, although let's admit that the knight on g3 is not placed well. Meanwhile, black is extending on the queen side, c5, d takes c5, d takes c5, queen c7, white castled king side, h4, there it goes, this white knight is exposed to attacks, knight h5, black is playing on both flanks, but at the moment black can't do anything, white stands super solid. Queen goes to d2, e5, knight f2, trying to find a better square for this cornered knight and knight f8. Look, at this point it was high time to castle kingside or play knight f4. But in our game we have knight f8 and after this move black will no longer have a chance to castle. There came a4. Challenging black's pawn structure on the queenside b4 and there it goes. Can you find white's next move? Yes, yes, let's go for knight d5. The first sacrifice lands on move 17. C takes d5, e takes d5. By sacrificing a pawn, white got two powerful passed pawns on the fifth rank. f5. This is already a serious mistake. Better was playing knight e6 and giving back the piece as soon as possible. But instead we have f5 after which black can no longer repel white's aggression. d6, queen c6 and another heavy blow by white. Yes, yes, let's go for bishop b5. This is crazy guys. The second minor piece sacrifice is on the board. Black is accepting that sacrifice as well. What else black could do? Queen takes b5. Well, queen b7 is better if c6, then rook a1. If c takes b7, then check, and then bishop takes b7. Of course, uh, again, white stands better, but this gives black a slight edge. We have queen takes b5, and rook takes a8. Now the uh, bishop on c8 is hanging. Queen c6, rook a1, the second rook is coming f4, now the bishop on e3 is hanging, but there came, there came rook a7, creating rook e7 threat. For example, now if you accept the bishop sacrifice, then check, well, how do you like this beauty? Check, and then another check, queen takes b4, white is winning. So, after rook a7, we have knight d7 blocking the 7th rank. And there came White's next move. What's White's next move? Of course, Rook takes Rook takes c8. Why not? Why not? Uh, by the way, never, never play Rook c7 because you will lose your Rook. That's why. Rook takes c8. Check an exchange sacrifice. Queen takes c8. Queen d5. 
not allowing black to castle and at the same time creating queen e6 threat. And also sacrificing this bishop as well, right? I've already forgotten that we have a hanging bishop on e3. f takes e3, queen e6 check, king f8, rook takes d7. This is actually the one and only inaccuracy in this game by Serper. Better was playing knight e4. And then knight g5 is coming. If knight f6, then knight g5. And if here, then a beautiful rook a8 concludes the attack. So, rook d7 is something which is allowing black to prolong his resistance. In return, black is winning white knight, king f1, of course not king f2, sorry, because you will allow black to win this pawn with a check and activate his queen, that's why king f1. Now we have a mating threat, queen e8, and now what to play? Here we go, guys! It's time for a rook sacrifice! Rook f7 check! Queen takes f7, queen c8 check. Queen e8, d7. Amazing, amazing! Serper, what are you doing? King f7, d takes e8, queen check. Rook takes e8, queen b7 check. Rook e7, and now what? c6 time for a queen sacrifice guys if you accept the queen sacrifice then black can no longer stop this pawn we have e4 and already yeah rook b7 is the threat followed by bishop e5 that's why white pawn stepped forward c7 e3 black is not resigning and is fighting back you have to be careful and not go for c8 queen because this uh, e2 check is coming and then it leads to a checkmate right yeah you have to be careful queen d5 check king f6 queen d6 check king f7 check here white repeated the moves in order to pass the 40 moves and gain extra time king f7 and here we go yes yes you are right queen takes e7 check Finally, finally, white is sacrificing his queen. King takes e7, but the new queen is being born. Come on, buddy. c8, queen. Bishop h6. Again, still black is not resigning. Check. King e8. Queen b5, check. King d8. Queen b6, check. Still white has to find a way to win. And then the pawn on g6 dropped. e2, check. You have to be careful. If king takes e2, then knight f4 check, traps are all over the board. That's why white won the pawn on f2. Bishop e3 check, another cunning move, you can't win it, because black will promote his pawn to a queen, and goodbye, immortal game. Uh, king e1, ah, and, and in here, finally, finally, Ioannis Nikolaidis resigned. If knight f4, for example, then just queen f5 check... And then g3. It's over. That's why, once again, after king e1, black resigned. Just a fantastic, yeah, fantastic is an overused word, but this game is truly fantastic. Will be great if you can share it with all of your friends. They will enjoy it as well. In the end, a chess puzzle for you. The task is to win with the white pieces. We'll wait for your answer in the comment section. The task is very easy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.